Hello and welcome back to another episode of uh, Warhammer 40k Rogue Trader. My name is Saiken and today we're continuing the blind playthrough on Unfair Difficulty. We are finding ourselves in a new star uh, sector today. So it's a bit of exploration. We got the Pulvis Platinum where we are uh, first of all charting new routes because that's always good to do. Got a nice little navigator's insight. Uh, I wonder if we can get more than one navigator's insight. Uh, we're always super starved with that, it seems. But yeah, maybe it's just how uh, how it is designed. We can fly back to Telikos and then get to uh, Silence here. I haven't really seen a lot of great connections over to the right hand side. Um, all of this seems to be completely unchartered, so maybe we can, maybe it will work from here. Anyways, uh, it's besides the point uh, today. Palvas Platinum, um, which comes with a lot of space dust. Ooh, look at that! Got a gutted void ship here. Beginning uh, the scan, no signal, but. There is a choice for us to deploy. Uh, before we're doing that, though, um, let's collect the rest here. Couple more trophies. And an asteroid. Tith grade asteroid uh, with uh, play, uh, plat steel. Uh, do we have plat steel already? Uh, we already have like 12 of it, so I'm not 100% sure if we need more, but maybe we can trade it later. It's definitely the last time that we um, that we extract it. I wonder if we can find more contracts here. Because these uh, contracts are super, super good. Uh, they are uh, essentially what um, gets us all of the profit factor. And profit factor means more items and more everything. All right, finally, after a little bit of exploration, it's time for us to land. That is very well designed for a gutted ship, but uh, immediately when we're entering, we're finding out uh, things are just not uh, really right here. I'm okay with that sort of setup. Thanks Let's to Sister go. Argenta's efforts, the streets of Footfall are now a little cleaner. The Agile mutant is a worthy accomplishment. I am wherever there is need for his wrath, which scorches the wicked, casts out the profane, and purifies his servant's doleful fate. Well, how about we're just I purifying this no mutant? Guidance. The absurdity of your struggle amuses me. The masters demand your death. Good. Abelard uh, takes uh, this side here by himself. Heinrich uh, takes uh, this side. Cassia moves up. Argenta moves uh, to here. And I think we're good. Pascal can put a zone here and then position himself into it as well. Alright, here we go. Let's start with Cassia. Who could hand over an action to someone? Might as well do that right away to Argenta. Not a servitor. Who starts by putting down uh, all of these guys are melee uh, so she starts to put down some shots that further shot 
into As the that. Commands, Works well for me. Okay, listen. Um, we got another turn right here. Might as well give that over, but equally we could just double buff Argenta. Got a proper turn here. Buff for Saiken. Um, move to here. Causes all of them to come together. If I may, sets more damage uh, down there. Um, let me think. We need a backline still. Putting backline to here is for free, so that's not a uh, that would not be a problem. Uh, we could hit all of uh, these guys as well, and still be able to hand over an action to Saiken. Fantastic. Who in return uh, does have three um, uh, three points? Might as well give uh, Cassia a buff. Mm. We could uh, buff further and then just snipe, which I think is the best case here. Or alternatively. Hmm. We can't use we can't use Wrath of the Emperor. Um, could use it up here, but somehow line of sight is blocked. Maybe due to this here. Oh, I'm just realizing there are more. Okay, never mind. These guys will eventually run up here, and there's even a mutant priest. Interesting. Cool. But all of that doesn't matter. Um, I think we're just going to buff. One step closer. And Psyche so deals some damage. The flesh, the oh spirit. wow! Look at that. That was a fantastic hit. Okay, back to Cassia. Places uh, the ne another zone down for free. Uh, slightly moves back to here, of and we're good. So we got a free stratagem, uh, blitz stratagem. The grand stratagem chooses one of the combat tactic areas for one round. All allies uh, in the range of eight cells gain the ability to move to that area. This movement does not, does not provoke attacks of opportunities. Okay, well, that's uh, not a bad uh, stratagem. I like it. Before we're doing anything crazy, though, let's move up here. And we could scan all of uh, these guys down there. Good, machine communication, successful. Let's shift the damage over to here. We don't uh, need that, we're just starting with the ones that are closest to us. And since he's so difficult uh, to hit, let's improve the hit chances a little bit. Still not great, but We'll do what we can. No. 
Why does it? Why is he so difficult to hit? It has a high dodge rating. Just has a high dodge rating. Okay. Well, that's unfortunate. We're putting this in. And this is for free, so might as well. And uh, what else do we do? Move into here. Putting ourselves in a nice little position. Cool. Uh, this is free movement, and free movement is always good. Uh, I would say we're just getting the guys up here killed. However, this here would look like a great option as well. Let's start with the obvious choices, shall we? Uh, so, we've already had two shots, so let's do this. And that. As the Emperor commands, I. We can kill the guy down here. That would be good. Faith without deeds is worthless. That is not the Emperor's will. No, none of uh, these guys would be an immediate kill. Hence, we're trying to hit over there. And we're a little bit exposed with Argenta, but that's okay. Heinrichs buffs himself. Let's see to it. But Charges in order to get that guy. Uh, whilst we're at it, uh, to be fair, Let's might as well it. buff ourselves further. Alas, no. Not sanctioned to do this. Your reckoning is due. Good. We're getting closer to. I won't do that. We're getting closer. Glory. Can easily move back, which is fantastic. Oh wow! That was a... These guys do have ranged attacks. I wasn't expecting that, to be uh, to be honest. Good. Saiken immediately begins to heal himself. That was some harsh treatment. Still can't hit these guys down there, which is annoying. Uh, I would like to hand over an action just so that we can continue to be healed. This here could be a good hit. Let's make sure that that we deal as much damage as possible. Up to 118. That sounds great. Tribute. Fabulous. That was a really, really good hit. Good. I think Abelard gets uh, gets the turn. Heal Saiken for free. Gives everybody defense. It will be done. And free bulwark. And then moves into the open. Uh, just to be the best possible target. Um,
can't charge down, which is a bit annoying. Um, but has ultra high uh, movement. We should just use that, even if it is an attack of opportunity, doesn't matter. All right. Abelard charges in. Has both of these guys uh, solidly uh, put onto him. Um, put that in. And continue to hit him. Very good. Avalar definitely is going to stand his ground there. Chaos guides me. Ah. Brace yourself, Avalar. I bring ruin. Ah. I'm in place. Fabulous. Very, very good. Um, well, I hate to have this guy here. So having them in the open, much better. That would be a good hit. Step aside. The navigator is coming. That would be a good hit. I think we should do exactly that. Me. If you insist to die with grace, at least. Fantastic. And we got finest hour onto agenda for a couple of hits let's make sure that this guy here is going to die one down down I'll do it free movement to here I like the blitz strategy better than I expected Can't hit this guy, but we can we could hit over here. As the Empress is why I was chosen. Faith without deeds is worthless. A couple of ninety-five percent uh, shots were missed, which is hilarious. Isn't this a job for the serfs? Alright, Argenta just continues again. Let's use this because it gives us another another stack. You, my Emperor. And that's a fantastic hit. And Argenta moves back. Uh, I think for the purpose of this here, if we're I soon may. going to need it over there. And Cassia can be in the front line, that's okay. Integrity factor increase. I don't like the splitter mutant down there. Oh, 
Although this year should uh, get him out of his comfort zone. On the other hand, getting that mutant down is going to be paramount. Good, we're putting a couple, a, bit, a little bit more uh, mm, defense in. And everybody gets some extra damage, and Pascal shouldn't be, shouldn't be taking that much damage. Okay, if we were to shoot, no, that's not going to work, but uh, we could very much move to here and then it would work. Alright, that's that's the play. I can see it. I'll do it. More shots. As the Emperor commands, I act. And let's hit these guys. Nice little kill. Doubt is for the weak. Each strike is a prayer. All right, Argenta moves back, and we got Heinrichs, who theoretically should be good to go and uh, move in. I need a foot moves off. to here I won't object to it. buffs his friend taunts these two uh, we can still buff everyone Naturally. there we go Very low percent chance to hit this guy because he's in such good cover, but we're getting versatility stacks from it, and I'll still do it. Doesn't matter, the versatility is what counts. I won't object to it. Oh, wow. How can you hit all of these shots? He is such a good dodge tank, and yet all of the shots are hitting. Something is not right. Are these auto hit abilities? I don't know. Good. This, and this, and this, and then we're acting afterwards. But I can tell you, we need to get this guy down there. Unfortunately, we can't. Uh, unfortunately, we can't reach him, which is really, really, really unfortunate. I am a Good. Force these guys to move into different directions. Cycle moves up. And I think we're just going to 
scream at him at the same time. Purpose We're then guide. moving back. Just a minor setback. Okay, so that would work. This guy needs to die. Isn't this a as duty to Way, 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 way too much damage. Sorry, Abelard. Sorry, Abelard. That was not intended. Careful. Indeed, gray hair, sure hair. Wow. Overall, this was much more difficult than I would have anticipated. Specifically due to the auto-hitting, that was the biggest problem in my perspective. As the Emperor commands, I act. I'll do it. Faith without deeds is worthless. Fantastic. For the throne. I'm oh. done with this one. Pain and duty go hand in hand. Oh, wow. Uh, listen, I mean, a couple of things that uh, we learned from these uh, mutants. Uh, some of them... I want to know what the ability here was. Acid spit. Inflicts melting effect. And it just automatically hits. That is a nasty ability. The world trembles beneath I would have my totally feet. overlooked that when just looking through their stat block. Wow. Specifically, if multiples of them have it, there is only so much you can do about it, right? Got a good chain axe, which is fine, but I don't think that it is good enough to justify keeping it. Wow. Okay, I'm still a bit miffed about how that really didn't work in our favor. Okay, the cape lowers all enemies' perception. Well, that's not bad. And what do we have here? Navigator staff. Okay, we're going to see if the navigator staff is better. Willpower, higher perception. Allies targeted by the navigator's power. Okay, so effectively you can... Uh, stack infusion uh, infusing but I think I'll keep the bloodhound staff because uh, the devastating ability is very very good for double um, double lid the devastation cap uh, cape on the other hand if we had high fellowship uh, that would be a good one You know what? Uh, it's more akin to a tank to use uh, that cape. It's not great, um, but minus three to perception simply means less chances for Let's them to hit. Is the opportunity. I'm surprised that the zones are still on the ground. 
Contator Machine Spirit uh, stays silent in an attempt to reach the system. Okay, well that is potentially truly destroyed. But we can clear that passage and maybe we'll find something behind it. Okay, so the navigator essentially just took his, uh, their eye and and killed everyone. Okay. I tread a path unexplored. Okay, there is still a mutated enforcer. I think that these guys are up for no good. Intriguing. Navigator, the leader of the Ravage ship's crew, wipes the sweat from his brow in a uh, motion characteristic for navigators. Not with his whole hand, but with two fingers, moving from left to right. Uh, and back so that they don't touch their third eye by accident. This movement is the only sign of fatigue he allows himself. His posture is immaculate, shoulders wide, eyes uh, front, as if he just emerged from a grueling battle and it's simply greeting you uh, on the bridge on an uneventful day. My greetings, your lordship! There is no need for introductions. I know the hairs of the Valencia's line by sight. I am Han of House Cassini, the navigator of this vessel, and as the senior uh, survivor officer, I assumed command after the accident. Lady Navigator, what an unexpected and pleasant meeting considering these circumstances. Han D. Uh, courageously dips his head to Cassia. I have not had the honor of being personally acquainted to you, but of course I know the emblem of Horse or Orselio. How fair is the honorable re regent? Uh, Cassia says, Cassia Orselio, a cordiality will not disguise the eyes blue coldness of your words, Navigator Han. However, I will tell Regent Aronto that you inquired after his health. You pass my best wishes to Novator Cassini. And now let's set the pleasantries aside. I'm sure the rogue trader would like to ask you a few questions as Han speaks. Others glare uh, at you with tension up close. You can plainly see that even one of them is a mutant. Their faces and bodies bear the mark of incredible grotesque deformations. What happened to you and the crew, Han? The ship is assigned to the port of Droganus. Some time ago, the captain was uh, instructed to deliver a package urgently by hand to you, your lordship. You were shown as the picked of uh, the face. The disaster struck during the warp travel. I will never know how all of the details. Uh, I will never know all of the details, as I was preoccupied with my primary duties. But for some reason, the captain decided to open the package. That. As you may have noticed, had most destructive, uh, destructive impacts on the crew. The pack package contained a chaos artifact, a chaos bomb, if you will. The moment it was removed from its protection cocoon, the crew began to lose their minds and mutate. Uh, the first to be affected was the captain and the senior officers, but the effect spread with an incredible speed. Even uh, every deck was consumed by it, every last one. The raging mutants, no longer sane, damaged many systems, and the ship was in distress and would have almost uh, certainly been destroyed had I not resorted to making an emergency exit from the warp. The people you see here are the only survivors, or rather the only ones who were able to retain both their lives and sanity. 
I gathered everyone I could, isolated the source of the danger and sent out distress signals. We were adrift waiting for help to come and fight off, um, fighting off the mad crew members and then you arrive. So the chaos package was meant for me, who's the sender? As far as I am aware, uh, the order came from Kunrad Voigtvir, the master of whispers of the rogue trader's retinue. It is likely that he had arranged the delivery, either personally or through intermediates. Abelard, of course, turns uh, deep blue. That blast traitor beat us uh, to Dragonos and is now free to act with impunity. Indeed. A heretic who uh, is vested with legitimate power and whose latest activities remain a mystery to all. Believe me, Saiken, an individual like you, uh, like your former master uh, of whispers, will not stop at sending chaos artifacts uh, in his attempt to destabilize your protectorate. All right. Uh, Navigator says, your reaction suggests that you were not expecting a package of that sort. I'd almost convinced myself that the rogue trader was deliberately collecting chaos artifacts. I'm not tainted by chaos and I knew nothing of this package. I give you my word as a rogue trader. And I beg your pardon. Your lordship, I saw the terrible death of the entire crew in my own eyes. I was forced to bring the ship out uh, of the warp by means of emergency maneuver and then had to fight my former comrades, insane and twisted. I am tired. However, the sender wanted all of this to happen to your ship, not to ours. Uh, were you not affected by mutations and madness? Well, it depends. I was born a mutant, uh, you see. Navigators are taught to resist the influence of chaos, so I have been as best as I could. But I will be frank to you. I cannot be certain I avoided it completely. There have been no visible indications yet. All signs. Uh, of Hen is telling the truth, but you also notice clear evidence of just how difficult it is for him to struggle against the corruption. He's extremely tired, practically a sore, uh, exhaust. Where, where's the artifact now? I have it placed inside of a protective sarcophagus, more reliable than the previous repository. Unfortunately, an artifact as powerful as this can only, uh, could not uh, be destroyed under these circumstances, or rather, I had no assurance that it would not disintegrate everyone of us and scatter us across several light hours of neighboring space. But once we are off the ship, I will absolutely find a way of destroying it. Um, face it, Cassini. You can't leave the ship. The corruption of chaos uh, of the chaos bomb did uh, afflict you, albeit not as strongly as the others. What are you saying? Does the rogue trader have uh, that law of opinion of uh, the novice nobly's blood? I have been gazing into the eyes of the warp for as long as I can remember. I can fight it. Okay. Mm hmm. <coughs> I would still like to look at the artifact. You want to see a trinket that nearly wiped out a whole ship? Why? Um, I've seen enough to stop anyone else from coming anywhere near it. I'll give my life if I, if I must to prevent that thing from hurting any more people. All right, persuasion. Trust me, I will take this sarcophagus um, to deliver it to those who can destroy it safely. Trust as uh, the intended recipient of the damn package, rogue trader or no? You're asking too much of me. No, either I will personally see the abomination destroyed or I will not leave the ship. Well, great. We ne never had the chance to actually take him on board. I did not have uh, an option there. All right. All you have been tainted uh, by chaos, death to the mutants. Uh, 10 willpower. If uh, the wearer is dogmatic, they also gain fellowship. Perfect. Uh, that uh, almost screams Saiken. 
Nice. Nice. Very good. Uh, yeah, you don't really need fol uh, fellowship. Well, I guess it's better than not having fellowship. There you go. Cool. Congratulations. Give the order um, to lay mines. We have sufficient resources and knowledge will destroying this uh, sh uh, thing. Powers unseen, uncover my path. Well, it is very, very, very unfortunate what happened here, but such is the way of chaos. It slips uh, in ever so slightly. There is a good reason why there are so extreme measures in the Warhammer universe against chaos and why uh, even the slightest taint of chaos uh, will automatically result in uh, the Im elimination of anyone who has been affected. Good. Given that we cannot uh, move there anymore, I'd say we have done well and have uh, indeed killed that. Which, with 30 profit uh, factor, brings us further forward. Let's uh, travel here and we're going to the silence of the mere uh, sacred. Uh, so that here needs to be made a little bit safer and then we're visiting it the lord captain retires uh, to his study to ponder uh, what the future looks like a while later his thoughts are interrupted by a timid knock on the door let's see i think it's maybe cassia coming up with uh, some personal uh, um, stuff again The young servant in fine livery uh, quickly bows uh, to you and places a particular object on your desk, a transparent dome with a living flower inside. I was instructed to deliver this gift to the Lord Captain only. Examine it. Before you is a fragile branch of Lavandulum Quadis, a most rare specimen native to the world of Quadis in the Calixia sector. Covered in tiny bloom, the color of a purple sky, the plant has been carefully sealed inside of a dome along with um, mineral fertilizer modified by the Magos Biologis, which will sustain it for many years. You've already met the servant who delivered uh, this gift. He's Lady Cassius' personal valet. At least you know the identity of the sender. Look at that. I told you it's her. As for the plant itself, in terms of uh, the ancient etiquette of nobility, all but forgotten in the days and age, come to mind Immortalium, or Eternal Flower, a living plant capable of enduring the void for centuries, an extremely rare sight in the Coronos expanse and unmistakably a token of the giver's special flavor. The appearance of an Immortalium in the life of two aristocrats is a unique ritual, the purpose of which is to demonstrate their true intentions without words. Every gesture, glance or phrase in this ritual is imbued with a deep symbolistic meaning. You are expected to take the next step, which is either to reject the gift by pointedly ignoring its existence or to accept it on your own terms. The recipient's acceptance can be expressed through words of gratitude, private conversation or sending a gift in return. High factotium genus Danrock can always assist you in the letter. All right, Janus, I need a little bit of a help here. Just ignoring it. Uh, if you ignore uh, females, it never really works out well. I can 
speak from experience there. Been given an immortalium and need help to arrange a reciprocal gift. An immortalium, may I ask what exactly I should arrange for Lady Cassia? Um... Do you have any idea? I suppose you could discreetly ask Levi Na Lady Navigator about her preferences in a personal uh, convention. All right. Well, um, let's discreetly do that. Um, by which I'm already acknowledging the gift's existence. And everybody seems to know that uh, she and I are having a bit of a thing here. <laughs> Words cannot describe how boring the bridge is without our stimulating conversations. We don't talk about gifts, or not. Um, if, uh, why don't we talk about gifts? Uh, gifts? What do you mean? Um... You really uh, delivered a rare gift for me at your request, I presume? Cassia shrugs non-commentally, raising her questioning ruby gaze at you. I see people's emotions in the vivid spectrum of hues surrounding their essence, Lord Captain. And I understand everything. However, I have enjoyed this little game. I hope you have too. Uh, um, Lady Cassia, I bring near you has made me reckless. No. Resolutely declare my acceptance. All right. And Cassia's powers recite uh, the austere. A zerf on her face is replaced for the first time by passion in her eyes, a curve of her lips, uh, the slight tilt of her head. I feel like reading uh, rom-com fan fiction. With a small nod of her smile and reddened lips, she holds out her hand, pale and trembling. Lord Captain, I would like to spend some time alone and think about... Alright, so let's find a good gift. She indeed is more the slow play type. Why can't I exit the dialogue anymore? Well, I think talking to her has already acknowledged uh, the gift. And we can chart new routes. Come on, give me more than one point for once. That stingy, 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 stingy game always only gives me one point. Why can't we get a little bit more? And this is a dangerous route, by the way. We are, for the first time, at the point where I cannot... Reduce uh, the warp travel to less than zero. How do I get more of these points? Navigate this inside special resource uh, by exploring the Coronas expanse, by scanning new systems, anomalies, or participating in non combat space events. Non combat space events. That's what you need to do, Saiken. The navigator of the flagship uses it to build new warp routes. Okay, but. 
how do I participate in non-combat space events? Anyways, before we're visiting, before we're visiting uh, the new system, let's just double check if we can buy something uh, new. And then I think we're already for this episode at uh, the end. So let me just explore our trade relationships because we now have 30 um, profit factor, which isn't bad. It's actually quite good. So uh, here we got five crack grenades, which is great. Uh, we got a power uh, claymore, uh, which is a fantastic sword. Might be something that Aberart uh, might use. And we would have a cloak. Each enemy killed by the wearer's area attack increases the wearer's damage. That is a good cloak. And a few multi keys, so might want to get the reputation up just a little bit more. And I know that they are the only ones with holy gifts, so that's easy peasy. Alright, let me try to get it a little bit higher. Yeah, we got it one level higher, but uh, that unfortunately, I thought that was one level, but uh, we will need to invest a little bit more. However, that merchant is doing very well. Mobile extractions, thank you, fantastic. We got a portable manipulator. Uh, using reloads for any weapon costs one AP less. So that is a perfect option. And a precise laser gun, which uh, is uh, very, very good. Laser snipers are excellent. So we got uh, another combat manipulator here, level 9. Let's just see if I can get the reputation up. Good, we got it up for one turn uh, or one more uh, level. And the haywire grenades seem great. More grenades means good. And we got a combat manipulator. That in itself is also good. Uh, down here, um, the uh, Tokora the Leech uh, isn't our biggest fan, uh, shall we say. Um, and it'll take a long time to get to here. Uh, the bladed boots, however, seem quite nice, but I don't think that we can really uh, get him. I mean, Xeno artifacts are one way of uh, going about it, but we don't have a lot of them. Got a few. That's pretty much it. Yeah. Okay, we'll, we'll just need to work on him. Slow and steady wins the race here. Got a super discount, uh, but oh, this is that's an interesting staff. Uh, staff um, might be something that we could take. Give me a second. Now we got too little left over, and finally, this here would be fantastic. But they are only trading uh, stuff from from ship battles so that's, this here is very difficult to raise we need to do more ship battles in order to get better stuff which sort of makes sense I guess all right so uh, with that out of the way we got a few items for starters we got nice grenades which deal a pleasant amount of damage um, is anyone still using the base grenades Okay, well, good. That seems uh, very much legit. Now, we got a few other items, right? So, we got uh, reload cost reduction, which I think is great.
Then we got uh, whenever the wearer uses a non-attacking uh, consumable medkit, it counts as an attack of a different um, type uh, for versatility. Hmm, that is very good, and Saiken is definitely going to take that. Because he has problems building up versatility and he benefits a lot from it. So giving him the stimulants and med kits, it's a non non aggression. So yeah, he has the right uh, the right stuff for it. Then we got a sword, uh, which uh, Abelard might be interested in. Uh, his current great sword is funnily enough better than the power claymore well arguably power claymore has more armor penetration and since enemies do have armor uh, let's go with that let's go with that finally how well does the precise laser gun much less range <clears throat> but does have a burst mode a good dodge reduction it's overall not a bad weapon but yeah really not what we need at the moment might be good for someone else it's always good to keep a little bit more stuff around all right and that's kind of the end of today's episode, I would uh, say. For now, thanks a lot uh, for watching. We're going to explore the next system in the next episode. And as always, uh, stay true to the Emperor. Help me cleanse the like button. With your help, we should be successful. And uh, avoid the heresy of just clicking off of the video. Take care and goodbye.